point estimator is a point which is giving us some sensible information about the data so such a, such as we have two brands of uh, two batteries of different brands one lasts for 12 months and the second one for let's say 20 months so we can say that uh, the second battery is giving us because it is giving us a longer life so it is better than battery of type 1 uh, the point estimate however says nothing about how close it might be to the population mean so for this what we are doing we are interested in estimating the entire interval of plausible values and this interval is basically called confidence interval uh, a confidence interval is always calculated by first selecting a confidence level which is a measure of the degree of reliability of an in, in interval so uh, I can say okay a confidence interval with a 95% confidence level for the true ev true average life of that battery has some lower limit and an upper limit then at 95% confidence level any value of the population mean between the lower limit and upper limit is plausible so here we can say uh, a confidence level of 95% implies that 95% of all the samples would give an interval that includes mean or whatever other parameter that is um, being estimated. So it might be uh, noted that um, population mean is constant and sample mean is a random variable because whenever I am collecting data uh, sample values are changing so that's why the sample mean is a uh, random variable a correct interpretation of 95 confidence interval relies on long-term relative frequency interpretation of probability uh, to, say, to say that an event A has probability of 0.95 is to say that if the experiment on which A is defined is performed over and over again in a long run, then this event A will occur 95% of the time. So it should not be noted that we cannot assign a probability to confidence interval. But we can say, okay, if we are running an experiment for over and over or for long term or for almost infinite number of times, then we can say that 95% probability has, let's say, 95% nine, nine, confidence interval has 95% of probability that it will capture the true mean of the population. I'm using the word this long run again and again because um, this can be explained with the help of this figure here so first confidence interval is capturing um, true mean of population second one is also capturing tech third confidence interval is not so this means that you see it's either one or it's zero 
either it's capturing or it's not capturing. So that is why they are using the term when this re when this is repeated over and over and over again. Then it's not just for like two or three or just one iteration. So. So, um, we are basically using confidence interval to estimate the lower bound and upper bound and then we are saying okay, we are 95% sure that uh, the lower bound and upper bound of the confidence interval is capturing the true mean of the population. Uh, why don't we seek 100% confidence interval? So, because, right, our estimation of the true parameter is based on a sample and we can never be 100% sure. If we want to be 100% sure, then our sample should be as big as our whole population. Which means that if my if my um, sample size is equal to population, then I will um, have the surety of hundred percent that I capture the true mean of population. Here you can see the width of confidence interval is given. If I'm increasing sample size, this width will decrease. If I keep on increasing the sample size until it reaches the size of the population, then I will have only one point, and that point will be the true mean of the population. Um, confidence limit for the mean here. Um, so, in general, a population mean mu is equal to the sample average with plus minus some error right and that that plus minus error is basically um, x minus mu uh, so if the population has a normal distribution with with uh, known sigma then we can always say that okay z, uh, z is equal to x bar minus lambda divided by lambda of x and after replacing the value of error we come up with the mean as x bar plus minus T n minus 1 comma 1 minus alpha divided by 2 multiply by standard deviation whole divided by this portion whole portion divided by square root of n so this is the um, derivation however if you are uh, interested in the t distribution um, we can use this particular equation here so it should be noted that uh, um, t distribution and normal distribution they are uh, both uh, symmetric around zero uh, in addition, for a large sample size, the T student distribution converges to the standard normal distribution. If your sample size is very, very large, then both distribution will give you the same result. That does not make any difference. Okay. So here, 1 minus alpha is basically the uh, 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval is equal to x bar plus minus x bar is my sample mean remember 
t n minus one n is my um, sample size one minus alpha by two. So uh, multiply by uh, standard deviation of the sample, and this portion divided by square root of n. And small n is my sample size. So um, this whole area under the curve is alpha this is my cutoff region so here is alpha by 2 alpha by 2 and I add this is alpha and this light blue area this is 1 minus alpha now this is my cutoff region here alpha by 2 and minus alpha by 2 and uh, because I am interested in lower bound and I am interested in upper bound, so that is why I am dividing alpha by 2. The same concept is being deployed in hypothesis testing. So if you have a one tail test, you won't be dividing alpha by 2, but if you have a two tail test, um, you need to divide this alpha by 2 because you want to take care of both bounds, upper bounds and lower bound. Uh, we have a built-in function in Excel, T in V. Um, um, in exams, I think uh, you people will be required to use uh, tables. So, T tables have uh, values of uh, t n minus 1 and alpha here um, we have a very simple example example uh, tells that the dielectric breakdown voltage is available or let's say this is the average or this is the battery life of um, uh, let's say any random company right first battery gave us 24.46 months and second battery gave us 25.61 months stuff like this and I have 20 values here so degrees of freedom is 19 because n minus 1 is um, 19 and in question it is asking me to calculate 90% two-sided kind of confidence interval so 90% right 90% is 1 minus alpha and uh, 1 minus alpha is equal to 90% 1 minus alpha is 90% so my alpha is 10% and in the problem it is mentioned that we have to calculate two-sided confidence interval so we need to divide this alpha by 2 so that is why t19 95% uh, and then t19 5% so that's the uh, main point here second step would be to calculate the uh, mean and standard deviation of the sample um, this value we can just uh, calculate it from the t table and this is the percentage points of t distribution usually it is given in the um, statistic your statistics books so here we have alpha which is 0 0.05 and my degrees of freedom 19 so it's 1.729 we don't need to um, calculate it for um, the other side because both both sides are mirror of one another I just need to multiply it with negative and that's it so it will be a negative value so um 27.7 27.793 is the mean 
1.73 is the standard deviation uh, sorry t9 t n minus 1 comma alpha 1 minus alpha by 2 or alpha by 2 this multiply by under root of my variance which is basically standard deviation and this portion divided by my sample size which is 20 comma and then we are using the plus sign here so this will give me um, lower bound and upper bound 27.23 is the lower bound and 28.36 is the upper bound so for this I can say that we are 90 percent sure that this uh, lower bound and upper bound or this interval will capture the true mean uh, of population and we are seeing this with 95 percent of confidence uh, variance confidence interval variance is a point uh, estimator and very important one so sometimes we are interested in finding um, an interval which will capture the true variance of a population for this one we will be using chi square distribution um, n minus 1 n is my sample size and s here is my sample variance so s square would be my um, sample variance and small s is my st uh, sample standard deviation x square will be my chi square uh, distribution here uh, you can see that it's x uh, square n minus 1 uh, comma alpha by 2 and 1 x square comma x square n minus 1 comma 1 minus alpha by 2 so this is how it works um, so here the same data is given and we are required to calculate the confidence 90 percent two-sided confidence interval for uh, sigma square so first I need to calculate the variance of my sample and then I need to know that it should be uh, it's important that you guys should know that chi-square distribution is not like one side is not the mirror of another so that's why I have to cal, um, get the values separately from the chi-square table just you can see that let's say half half right is not the mirror of the left side however here scenario is different so that is why for t distribution you only need one value but for chi square distribution you need to require uh, you need to calculate both values so for my n minus 119 here 0 0.95 and 0 0.05 which is 95% and 5% so once I plug in the values this is my answer 1.35 uh, and 4.01 and remember if I um, increase my sample size the this width will decrease and if my sample size is equal to my population then we will have only one point because Um, we are then 100% confident that we are capturing the true mean or true variance of population. So um, how is this stuff related to simulation? So applications are in engineering economics calculation, calculations typically uh, use estimated single point values however uh, simulation is basically using random variables in stead of just single point values which is the 
uh, which is I would say a shortcoming of a deterministic experiment um, application so let's say uh, in a manufacturing system right throughput over a fixed time period is an observation of a random variable that's a general implementation of simulation uh, how do you know that uh, what probability model to be used in a simulation like for example how do you represent random customer customer arrivals to a service system so your service system could be a bank or let's say airport or anything and then the simulation methodology would include that how do you generate observations from a specific distribution and this is what we have discussed in our previous lecture how you are sampling uh, from a specific distribution so uh, running a simulation model is is like running an actual experiment so the output will be also a random variable so this is uh, it for today and take care be safe please thank you